We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. It's the Christmas edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. We're all festive. We're all here, starting with the one and only, the current reigning, defending Scholars of Wrestling heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Scar Scholar Charlie. Scholar Charlie, how's your night going? It's a great night. It's been a hell of a week, I'll tell you that much. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, TLC for the first time in a while, I can say that. The card seems to be shaping up. How about you guys? Uh, good question. Let's pitch it over to our man, the current Scholars Wrestling Party Champion, Scholar Tarek. Scholar Tarek, how is your day going and how is that light up ugly Christmas sweater game going today? All is perfectly well. It's same with Charlie. It's been a fascinating week. I mean, it's not every day you get Chris Jericho retweeting uh, yes. retweeting the video of your kid singing his theme song. That 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 is just an absolute win. Yeah, I think that was a highlight of everyone's weeks. And last but certainly not least, the one and only, the always unstoppable Scholar Brian. Scholar Brian, how's your diet? How's your night and week and dice and everything else in between? Because I can't talk today. My week has been not as interesting as the other two, but hard to complain. But, uh, uh, well, no, very easy to complain about 20 inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. And, uh, as for TLC, just overall, as Charlie said, um, I can't say that I'm looking forward to it. I can say that it looks like it's a good card, but it's TLC. It's normally a very predictable show, so hard, hard to get too excited. Yes, indeed. But then again, it's also it's also December. It's also the last pay-per-view from WWE for the year. And from what it looks like, it looks like there might be a fair share of surprises and unique matches. Some some Christmas surprises, if you will. You, uh, unique matches, I will give you. Surprises, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's it. Well, hey, let's break it down. Let's find out where there's going to be some Christmas surprises, where there's going to be some uniqueness, and when what might actually just end up falling flat. This is WWE TLC 2020. Let's bring this year to a close. Starting with kicking off the show, we don't have any uh, pre-show matches set up just yet or announced. But we do, what we do have is the New Day versus the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, now we're starting off with Champions Advantage. Champions Hold on, Big first. Can, you say, Hold on. can you say that again? Oh. Hold on. Wait a minute. That make it? <laughs> Wait, let... let Brian speak. Go, go did on. I say New Day versus Street Profits? Okay, he I did. messed up. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> Santa in the face. New Day versus whoever the hell that is. Oh, man. Hurt business. Okay, hurt business, yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, I'm. this is the Scholars of Wrestling show, not the Scholars of Reading Comprehension show. <laughs> this just already happened. Champion right. goes first. Go ahead, Charles. Yes. I'm going to start off the night the same way I ended off Survivor Series, and that is with a long shot. I'm going to go with the Hurt Business. Hmm. A bold choice. A bold choice from a bold man. Next up, we've got Scholar Tarek. Who do you got between the New Day and the Hurt Business? Is it really that much of a bold, bold choice when I actually agree with you? I am also going to go with the Hurt Business. I just feel that they actually have more to gain with the win. I mean, they've already had two tag title matches. One kind of kind of a fluke. They had to work they had to work their way around it, but I don't know. I just I just see uh 
Cedric Alexander going absolutely nuts thinking he won the WWE championship, except it's just the tag team titles with this one. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the hurt business. Hmm. All right. Scholar Brian, do we have an accord happening here yeah. or is there going to be a divergence? I'm, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, Charlie, but d- this really isn't that much of a long shot. I mean, as Tarek said, as, as Tarek said, okay, they've lost two tag team title matches already. So I'm like, they kind of have to win here or else everything they've been building up with Cedric Alexander and all that and and uh, all they've been building with Cedric Alexander, like I realized that WWE is pretty shit at building up guys right now. But really, if you start, you can't stop. And them losing this match clean or or in any way, okay, it, it doesn't work. But the, you've already had the Hurt Business lose twice. Okay, if you have them lose a third time, okay, the, the only thing that group has going for them is Bobby Lashley at that point. So give give them a run with the uh, – give them a nice long-term run with the United States title and the tag team titles, okay, and just have them dominate the mid-card. Which they kind of need to because they're, they're a very successful attraction in my personal opinion. I, I actually really like the Hurt Business as a yeah. faction. And I do want to see them succeed and re- basically start just collecting championships because they are a very entertaining group. Yeah, but here's here's where I'm I'm pausing here. Caveat. Like, uh, caveat. Where yes, this is likely what should happen. Yes, they're on a hot streak, but the question still remains: Will the WWE pull the trigger on them? And since it's my pick, I'm just going to say it. I think they will. I think they are going to pull the trigger on their time. And this is going to be the Hurt Business's ascension to the next level in in the WWE, which given who's in it, I'd say it's very richly rewarded. I'm glad everyone is firing on all cylinders and is doing some of the best work of everyone's career. That being said, now it's the time when we move on to the next match on the card. We've got Sasha Banks versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Tarek, it's your turn. You're first up. Who do you got? Sasha Banks versus Carmella. I'm thinking the one that actually is on a successful uh, TV show that just had their uh, season finale uh, released today. I'm going with Sasha Banks. All right, Scholar Brian, who do we got? Banks versus Plus, I just Carmella. hate Carmella. I, I'm not a fan of the Carmella character. Not, even her tweaking of their, like, brand new, trying uh, the female version of Little Bit of the Bubble is just not working. Scholar Brian, do you concur or deny? I think that there's no way you can have Sasha Banks lose here in any form of the imagination because, yes, she has that hit show. Okay, second of all, okay, she right now might be your second biggest attraction going into WrestleMania. So why would you take the title off of her at this point? It's, it's, I have, I, I hate to say, I, I don't hate to say it, but I have Roman Reigns, Sasha Banks, Drew McIntyre. My one, two, and three. Dude, spoilers. Yeah, for real. Go, no, just not even – Just not. I'm not even saying that, they, that they're winners, but, I mean, like, the, the, as stars in the company right now, okay, one, two, and three, those are your three. So – Yeah, but you're just saying what you're going to pick later on. Up, Charlie. Sasha okay. Banks, Sasha Banks was uh, – They're building, they built up Carmella way too strong, way too quick. 
okay, there, and there's no way that they take the title off of her. She's holding that till Mania, where it's probably at this point. I I think it's a rematch with Bailey. I will say, I will say though. I think this gimmick for Carmella is going to get her the women's championship back. I will, I will make that clear. This is a gimmick that Vince has been trying to get over with, with other uh, female wrestlers. And I just feel like Carmella is the one who actually is going to be successful in this gimmick. I'm just saying she will, and she will eventually, she'll definitely get it at some point next year, but no, she it's, yeah, she just – this is like her – I believe her first – no, no, no. This is her second uh, match back. I mean, last week was her first match against Sasha Banks, and she won by DQ. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see – again, the, Carmella's got to get the belt, just not this weekend. Well, here's the thing. In my eyes, I don't know. I still have way too much doubt. And for this one, I am honestly going to go with Carmella. For, uh, again, for the reason I mentioned in the past, where I don't think her, Sasha Banks' role in The Mandalorian is really going to count too much, considering that they really haven't mentioned it on WWE programming much at all. And they seem to be pushing the hell out of Carmella. And third and finally, again, I could be wrong on this, but I feel like there's going to be some appeal for... Carmella, a heel, being the champion going into the new year, because that can set up any number of faces. Could be Sasha, could be someone else, could be any number of people. Ooh. Any number of faces coming to, starting with the Royal Rumble, to come after Carmella and be the chasers. So for that one, I am going with Carmella. And with that, Charlie, Scholar Charlie. Who is your pick? Oh my God. <laughs> Bro. Uh, oh, you're Matt Riddle now. You got some bro nuts? I had Sasha up till Jeff just spoke. And that scares me tremendously. But I think it would be pulling the trigger too soon. We're entering WrestleMania season. Usually Royal Rumble has the botchy ending to title matches. So I'm going to go with Sasha Banks retaining. Yeah, it's just one of those. I, you want the bigger name going into Mania. If it yeah. was at any other time, if it was at any other time, I'd put more thought into, into what Jeff said Absolutely. about Carmella. But I mean, like, who do you want going into WrestleMania season? Absolutely. The only, the only way Carmella would have won the title – on this show is if they actually put them in a tables match where Sasha yes. doesn't, doesn't yes. take the pin. Give them the Sheamus. The Sheamus. Yes. And uh, Sheamus. who was it before that actually won the champion? Female-wise, somebody won the championship. Alexa oh, Bliss sure. did it to Becky Lynch. Okay, thank you. In 2016. Of course well, you would do that with Becky Lynch, Brian. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's... I should have known that was Alexa Bliss. It, if it was in the summer, if it was in the summer, I'd be like, I'd put more thought into Carmella. But yeah, uh, I mean, like, that's not a good, that's. I'll so you give want it names for, for Carmella. You want names. You want names. Yeah. In the WrestleMania season. I can see her going into SummerSlam with the, be with the belt. Yes. Yeah. More than uh, more WrestleMania. All right, then. Well, moving on to the next match on our card. One Jeff, of the, part of me hopes you're right. Part of me I, hopes you're right. I, I, I hope I'm right, too, if for no other reason than to get some scholars points. Yeah. But that's beside the point. No pun intended. Elsewhere on the card, we've got our first of two TLC matches of the evening. We've got Roman Reigns going up against Kevin Owens for the Universal title. Let's see. Whose pick is it? First, it's Brian's first pick. Scholar Brian, what do you got? We've got Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens. I love Kevin Owens. Okay, don't get me wrong, but there's no way that Roman Reigns loses here. There's no way. None whatsoever. 
Roman Reigns is holding that till WrestleMania, and I'm not even completely certain he loses it at WrestleMania. Like that, like that. It's way too soon for the head of the table to lose the title. That that is a story that you can build upon for months to come. So yeah, there's there's no way. Out of the two TLC matches, I, do, I honestly think, I can honestly say this is the easiest, like, I don't even have to think about this one. As soon as Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens pop, popped up and s- said it was going to happen, I'm like, oh, it's a uh, filler opponent for Roman, which I hate to say about KO, but that's what it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I wish I could. I wish I didn't have to agree with you on that, but yeah. I, I've been a big fan of Kevin Owens for most of his career, come to think of it. But yeah, Roman has been on too much of a hot streak and booked way too too strong to to lose this one. So yeah, unfortunately, I begrudgingly have to go with Roman Reigns here. Uh, Scholar Charlie, what's your pick? Do we have a concurrence here? Because I think we do. Roman Reigns. Nothing stopping him right now. Definitely not Kevin Owens. And Scholar Tarek, is this just a formality at this point? Unfortunately, it is. And the one thing that actually is bo- that actually bothered me was what happened on this week, the Go Home Show on SmackDown, where you like they show you got to admire Kevin Owens. He keeps getting beat down. Oh, excuse me, he keeps getting beat down but gets back up and basically like, please, sir, I want some more. It's, it makes him at a very admirable baby face, but it's still the point where he's just the whole show. He was basically just getting his ass handed to him. I just wish that they were like, he's built to be such a sympathetic hero that you do want to see him win. But we all know the truth that, He's not going to, and he's not going to be getting that title anytime soon. So it's just, yeah, it's just how everyone's put it. It's just filler. Mm. And I feel like Kevin Owens deserves a lot more than that. I, yeah. I just, I, I kind of want, okay, I, I don't want any outside bullshit in this we're gonna match. Get it. We're going to get it. But I mean, like, I I think, like, in a TLC match, I mean, like, you can have Roman Reigns be a monster and kill off Kevin Owens with a big, with a, with a big spot instead of, in, instead of trying to get, instead of continuing the uh, Jimmy Uso. uh, Charlie, just have that belt on your shoulder, man. It's fine. It's fine. The J instead of the J Uso spot. It's beautiful. That uh, instead of J Uso, instead of what they've been doing with J Uso, like I I could Roman Reigns, I could do this on my own, but I'm gonna make you my bitch. It's like no, in a TLC match, just just kill them all. Just just take them out yourself. <laughs> well, they're obvious. It's obviously they're doing to just do it to just keep Kevin Owens looking strong because really he is one of the top faces of the SmackDown brand, so they can't completely shit on him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I mean, like you can you can do it in a way where it's a TLC match, so they still have to grab the title right mm-hmm. from the top of the ladder. Yes, yeah, so so have have Roman hit him with something and have him go off a ladder through like three tables or some shit, like the like the Edge John Cena did, like the Edge John Cena thing. Yeah, did, did did Edge going through those three tables by John Cena hurt him? No. So so I I think I think like a finish like that would wouldn't hurt. Kevin Owens. I'm I'm not saying have Roman Reigns murder him in five minutes. I'm saying like have a have a huge spot be what takes Kevin Owens out mm. instead of in instead of the story 
that you've got going. I know that they're going to do the story you've got going, but there's other ways you could do that. Well, let's see. We'll have to see how it goes. But in the meantime, we go from something stone cold predictable to considerably less than that. We've got Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Asuka and a mystery partner for the women's tag team championships. And I'm going to say it right out of the gate. I'm going to, I think it's going to be Asuka and her mystery partner. Do we I, want to throw an extra point for guessing the mystery partner? Sure. Why the hell not? Yes. Yes. I, I feel like, I, I feel like a lot I, of us are going to have the same name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay. If you, choose, if you choose Lacey Evans, fool. No. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not going to be Lacey Evans. Fool enough of you. No, Lacey Evans is not on this card. She cannot tempt me with her wiles. And no, no, no title matches for her today. However, as far as who is going to be her partner. I know. Oh, uh, boy. I've, I've, I'm blanking right now, but I'm I just going to I'm gonna go hard. with... I'm going to go with Lana because I've got a feeling it's going to be no. a red hair. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> Charlie is so heartbroken. No. You know no. what? I don't even know. I, no. I'm blanking on the thoughts right now because I wasn't sure if this is going to be even a question. But you know what? Screw it. Make me regret my choices. Charlie, pick. It's going to be Asuka and Dana Brooke. Uh, really? Wait, really? That's what I think. You really, are gonna? Oh, okay. I think that Jeff. I, th I think that Jeff had the better pick there. <laughs> well, then again, I, We're, uh, wait, are we going with the extra point? Yeah. yeah. So wait, if I choose Oscar and I get her mystery partner wrong, what happens? Nothing. You, you just, just get one point. Oh, okay. you don't get yeah, the you just get one point. point. Okay, Oscar <laughs> and Jana Brooke. <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> on that. Surprising note. On that surprising yes. note, Scholar Tarek, uh, where are your picks? Okay, first, I am also going to choose Asuka and Mystery Partner. And the Mystery Partner is going to be a returning Charlotte Flair. Ooh. Oh. This is getting interesting now. Well, they're going to throw the dynamic of the two tag team champions fighting over the Raw Women's Championship with Asuka. And it actually makes perfect sense for Charlotte Flair to come back in this one because it was storyline wise Nia Jax that took her out that took her out in the first place. Okay, okay. On that note, now it's Scholar Bryant's <laughs> turn to make me regret life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Once again, the two top dogs are in total agreement. Because I also think that it's going to be Asuka and a returning Charlotte Flair. Okay. Because let's think, let's, you can do, I think that's a better odd couple situation for, for a tag team champions. And you know, at some point in this case, it's going to turn into a build for Asuka and Charlotte for the title at WrestleMania because you can't have Charlotte not in a title match at WrestleMania. It's just not done. <laughs> so that's exactly. It. And it's so, what more of a create a weird, weird team than Asuka and the person who actually broke her undefeated streak for however many years. Exactly. So I, 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 I think it's the best move. Dana Brooke. You could do. And I have yeah. a feeling. I don't know. It, oh, and Mandy Rose makes more sense than Dana Brooke. Okay. I, I got just have a feeling. But it's, it's legit. The move to make here is to have it be a returning Charlotte Flair. And you could do an odd couple tag team championship run that actually makes sense and works. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. That's WWE for, logic. Thank you for all for making me regret life in general. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of odd couples, Love you. yeah, okay. Speaking I'll say of odds, Lana makes more sense to Dana Brooke. 
Okay, so I don't care. Yeah. I just have some feeling. I will Gentlemen, agree. Lana Gen- makes more sense than Dana Brooke because if Lana actually comes back, then they will actually complete the however long storyline they have of Nia Jax putting Lana through a table and having the poetic justice of Lana putting Nia Jax through a table. Damn it, Tark, stop making Old sense. Circle. So yeah, Lana actually was my number two, but then it just also ranked like, why the hell take her out of this storyline in the first place? Because that's just stupid booking. It's and- WWE. And with all these, with this record low raw viewership, yeah, it makes sense with the stupid booking. Why? That's why you're losing fans because you're trying so goddamn hard to appease to Vince McMahon instead of you know the fans. Well, on that note, can we transition to something that I think we all like: the yes. return of the of the Inferno match, but not just any Inferno match. We've got the Firefly Inferno match, the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Uh, Charlie, it's your pick. Pick someone. Who's get set on fire? Who wins? Come on now. Fiend wins. End of story. Okay. Scholar Tarek, who get who wins? Who gets set on fire? Here's the thing. This match, no, no, don't throw your arms in the ar- in the air because this the is fact as- that they. The fact that they turn this into an Inferno match shows that Randy Orton doesn't need to be pinned to win. Like, or doesn't need to, uh, the Fiend doesn't need to pin. Uh, Randy can't, doesn't eat a pin to win. So, like, if anything, the, only, the one thing I could actually see be set on fire are one of Bray Wyatt's gloves. And just for poetic justice, I can actually see the hurt, the hurt hand being caught on fire. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't as cut and dry as you think it is, Charlie. Uh, especially, <laughs> especially oh, no. how how strongly, how strongly uh, the one sided this feud is. Granted, Randy Orton does. Uh, I'm still going fiend. Ran, uh, Randy Orton uh, doesn't doesn't lose anything with uh, with losing here. Yeah. It's but. It doesn't hurt the fiend because he doesn't he doesn't need to be pinned because the whole point of the rule is just to get set on fire. Hmm. So who are you picking, Tarek? It's also the question. Like the I think the big question for me is, will they continue this feud after this match? Because for me personally, it's not it's not that easy a qu- uh, question to answer. Hmm. This is a, like I said, it's a very, part of me wants to just go the safe route and just choose Bray Wyatt. But like I said, there is really nothing, there's no, the, Randy's pretty much wrestling in his underwear. There's no part, there's no body part that can really be set on fire here. It's, but then again, this could also very well be a pre recorded match with camera tricks. And he could come out wearing that vest that he was before or something could like there, that. Could this be a cinematic match? You, you think it could be a cinematic Not match? Not necessarily yeah, a cinematic think match. About it. It's a Firefly Inferno. Inferno Definitely. Match. It so could also it, stand to be a pre-recorded match, what they've done before for The Fiend. It, hell, they did that with the greatest show! Yeah, I, d- I don't think This is the greatest show! D- it's not going to be a live thing because i don't even think it i don't even think it hits the ring i i think it's in the firefly funhouse if it's if it's in the firefly funhouse then i'm just choosing bray wyatt because yeah you know what i'm just gonna be safe here i'm I'm gonna choose bray wyatt okay although there are it's not as cut and dry as you were thinking i like i will no it definitely is i'm sorry well how you reacted with how I was starting this, my little... Yeah, yeah. I apologize. So I guess I'm just going to be safe and just choose Bray Wyatt, especially if it actually does end up being in the Firefly Funhouse and just we essentially just make this a a Firefly Funhouse match, which it will be very interesting to uh, see that, especially if they go the John Cena route with this one. Hmm. 
and just ha- basically break break down uh, Randy Orton's career. But I don't think they'll do that. They'll just probably just do the probably just go back to the Viper and the family arc and have a, another body double who's supposed to be Luke Harper. Hmm. On that note, Scholar Brian, who do you got? I feel like if this was a title match, then I would go further in the other direction and and go with Tarek's premise at the beginning of when he was speaking about uh, the Fiend losing by having one of his gloves set on fire. But because this isn't a title match, and I feel like they're building up for a WrestleMania title match between whoever wins tonight and The Fiend. So in that case, I feel like, uh, I feel like The Fiend Bray Wyatt wins. Okay, and there's some tricks or uh, Randy Orton is wearing clothes if randy orton is comes out wearing clothes that aren't his usual ring gear you could you could call it right there but but that but yeah i i feel like since it's not a title match and and it it's not cut and dry but it is more on the side of the fiend because randy orton is not losing anything in the midst of losing this match. It goes both ways. Nobody loses anything by losing this match here. <laughs> because Randy Orton's still going to be facing Edge at WrestleMania. And The Fiend is probably going to have a title match at WrestleMania. And if he's going to have a title match at WrestleMania, why not uh, set it up with a win here? Yeah, I was really hoping it would be a, we would have more of a split room here, but... Yeah, not only am I going with The Fiend to win also, but I am also going to say that Ramblin' Abbott gets set on fire very early on. He's got to get set on fire. Yes. Easy. (laughs) That's Randy Orton's perspective. Burn the wabbit, burn the wabbit, burn the wabbit. Burn the wabbit, burn the wabbit. I got a question. You guys, did you guys watch Raw? Uh, Yes. Yes. Am I alone with them not with that with having superstars interact with the Firefly Funhouse characters? Like I didn't like it. No, I didn't like it either. either. I it, just like them being creepy behind people. It takes the people yeah, it takes them. away from the Firefly characters. Uh, I'm I'm a little bit mixed. It, it I agree with you. It was a little off putting that they're sort of stepping outside of the crazy realm of the firefly funhouse so it's not really clear what what it is anymore Mm -hmm. but on the same time some of their interactions could be kind of fun uh i I just don't think that this was their best interaction with the main roster i i agree i agree with brian like i like the i like it when they're background and no one notices them but Mm -hmm. i feel like the only the only time people should interact with them is when they're in the Firefly Funhouse, like what John Cena did. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I, I don't know. It just, it definitely, it didn't feel like this was a Bray Wyatt call. I felt like this felt so like a Bruce Pritchard call and basically just not understanding the Fiends, not understanding the Fiend or the Firefly Funhouse instead. It's just like, oh, let's have them just wander around backstage and interacting with our, having uh, Huskis the pig boy interact with R Truth and. Uh, Matt Riddle calling ba- uh, Rambling Rabbit Baby Yoda or ba- Baby uh, what did he call him? It doesn't matter. But yeah, I, I didn't like that. It it definitely it, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it hurt him. It just didn't. It just wasn't right for the character and the history that they have with this with the with that Bray built with the Fiend and the Firefly Funhouse characters. And it the didn't, Firefly it didn't hurt him. It didn't hurt him, but would you say it didn't heal him either? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sh- it did nothing. You don't pay me for my jokes. <laughs> maybe, mess, maybe mess up my first initial throw and drop my pen. 
That there you go. See. Sure. Well, anyway, on that note, let's bring it on home with the last match on the card. We've got Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles. And the are second- there going to be extra points for a cash in? No. Uh, well, if you make the call for a cash in, but Charles, you and I already made our prediction for a cash in. Now we don't get another one. Oh, okay. All right. On that note, uh, let's see. Whose turn is it? I believe it's yours, Tarek. Uh, Take us home. Who do you got? Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles. Here's the thing. When you look at the match on paper, I'm looking forward to this. Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles TLC match for the WWE Championship. I'm all for it. I just don't like the story that they have or lack thereof story with this. I feel like the whole storyline is mainly focusing on just Miz uh, trying, Miz possibly cashing in. And on, I don't know. I just, it just didn't, I just hate the, that there was literally, there's little to no build when it came with AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre itself. Plus the whole potential will here. Will Sheamus turn on uh, Drew? Or will he not turn on Drew? And then they just automatically drop that story on because, hey, Sheamus uh, is a good guy. But, oh, this go-home show probably could have done something since Drew – they probably could hint at something since Drew didn't help Sheamus get attacked by uh, – uh, who was it that beat him? Was it uh, Miz and Morrison? Or was it AJ? That it, was AJ. it was AJ. It was AJ? It was AJ. Okay. With that being said, I think having AJ Styles celebrate with the title, the close raw, kind of set it in stone that AJ Styles is not walking out of the uh, TLC with the championship. I'm, I'm going to predict uh, Drew. And if I did have the cash-in prediction, I still say it wouldn't happen tonight. Or Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Ryan, who do you got next? I'm pretty much on the same wavelength as uh, Tarek here. It's uh, the story buildup has been pretty weak. And uh, I I feel like there's more legs in a Drew retention because you do have that storyline with Seamus. Okay, you do have things down the pipeline that you can do with Drew that you might not be able to do with AJ at this point in time with the way his character is. So I'm going to go with Drew retaining. I'm going to go with a Miz cash in. And I'm going to go with a Miz fail. All right. We don't get points for that one. Oh, yeah. It's I'm just going to, if there's going to be a cash in attempt. I'm not trying to get points. I'm just saying that Miz is going to cash in and Miz is going to fail. Well, I can't say I'm going to go quite that accurate with my predictions, but I will say that, yeah, it seems like a very obvious pick that Drew McIntyre is going to win this one. They're obviously going to be setting him up for something big coming in the coming WrestleMania season. And uh, I hope I'm just not convinced it's AJ Styles. And this is just a carryover until both men can be put in much bigger programs starting with the new year. Uh, so yeah, an arm front for Drew McIntyre. Uh, Scholar Charlie, take us home. Who do you got, Drew McIntyre or AJ Styles? McIntyre retains. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I was gonna say you can't be a more a much more on the nose than that. Just watch. Miz actually does cash in and succeeds, and that's like the big surprise that I can't call that. So. That's, no, the, it, it, that's the big shakeup that WWE thinks to get raw ratings. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that'll work. But Watch the champ on Miz and Miz. That'll put me on, on the seats. USA. <laughs> yeah. It, no, it, it can't it, because we, they can't have audience in the show yet, Charlie. I know. I, I just I'm, I'm, feel, I'm just quoting. Yeah. It, it just, yeah, it just feels like – don't get me wrong. I, I like the Miz. I like the Miz a lot. But with, the char- but with the characters that they've got going and the storylines that they could have, it's it's just one of those things. With all the storylines you've got for Drew right now that you could do, okay, 
why would you why would you do that I, I just build up Drew's mystique even more by having him like he he wins a TLC match he's all kinds of messed up and the Miz comes out to try to cash in and Drew's like and Drew still or if anything, take, if anything care. he uh he pulls uh, Seth Rollins and just Instead, uh, instead of waiting for the match to end, he just inserts himself into the match and tries climbing the ladder to take the title down. And oh, my like God. Him. Oh, What's God, they might, that might happen. He still won't win, though. Oh, he still won't win, but that, that's what's going to happen. He's going to – oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> just stop. Just stop. Are, oh, are we making anybody change your predictions last minute? No. I can't – no. I'm still – I'm still Stop. picking Drew, but uh, Miz is going to insert himself in this match, and he's going to try and steal the. Oh, oh, shit! No. All right, before let's just call it as it is, so no one gets all nervous and tries to change their predictions at the last minute. Our predictions are locked in. Everyone knows what we're picking, but now is part of our show where we're turning it over to our viewing audience, the wrestling tweeting, live streaming, live commentating audience, whatever you're going to be talking about. You already heard what we think. Now we're turning it over to you. So wherever you are all across the internet, leave us a comment, YouTube comments, Facebook comments, Twitter comments. Those are our favorites. And you can follow us at all across Twitter starting with at ScholarsOW for our main account for all the latest episode uploads every single week when we're on, of course. Or you can follow the conversation pers with us personally on our personal Twitter accounts, uh, starting with the champ, Scholar Charlie. Where can they reach you on Twitter? Charlene. Charlene. And Scholar Tarek, where can they reach you? You can reach me at the Avataric. And Scholar Brian, where can he reach you? I don't have any hand signals, but you can find me not getting retweeted by Chris Jericho at Atomic Beanpole. <laughs> hey, hope springs eternal for us all because it's a Christmas season. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy everything under the sun. Apparently, I Jeff doesn't want anyone to know where they can reach him. Yeah, no, I am anonymous. I am, Ooh. and you certainly can't reach me at I'm Robbie Rage on Twitter. You you can't do that. <laughs> oh, no. never, never, no. nope, no. Merry Christmas, you filthy that. animal. Yes. So, in all seriousness, thank you for listening with us for the entire year. Happy holidays to everybody and enjoy TLC. We certainly will, or at least make the attempt because you know who we are. We are the scholars of wrestling and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Happy Catch New you Year. For this. We'll Catch you for next this year. Scholars when we come back. See you next year. Scholars next. Scholars next year. Yay. <laughs>